Welcome to the Exceptional Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Anita Brooks. And here you'll find teaching topics, interviews, conversations, and coaching tips, all designed to help you level up. We all lead someone. The question is, are we leading well, exceptionally well? So join me on a quest, not for perfection, but absolutely for exceptional leadership. Today, I want to talk about something that came up as I was reflecting back over this year's client wins. I was super excited whenever I was looking at what we could measure as far as helping them save and make money. Well, to my surprise, when I did the math, I figured out that we have been able to help save our clients directly through the work we've done with them between $1.4 and $1.6 million this year alone. Oh my gosh, am I excited? I am celebrating. But in addition to that, Also, because of our work that we've done with them, we've been able to help our clients generate additional income that equals over $700,000 a year. So all in total, that's over $2.1 million in measurable money saved and made. Now, I say that not, I'm not trying to brag or anything like that. It's actually really humbling for me. It's very exciting. And this is what lights me up. This is part of how I make a difference in the world is by helping to take business leaders and executives and middle managers and even frontline leaders and show them things that they may be overlooking ways that they can save themselves money and make more money, but they can duplicate it year after year. Because see, those figures I just gave you, in almost every case, they're going to be translatable year after year after year. So you can do your own down and dirty math, and you can figure out what that's going to look like in five years or 10 years. Now, do you understand why I love my job? It's amazing. So today I thought I would talk about something that I've brought up in previous podcasts, but I don't know that I've ever truly delved into it. And so I'm going to talk about one particular expense that a lot of leaders don't truly understand. And this is the expense of disorganization and micromanagement. I'm not a fan of either one, but I'm going to show you, not just tell you today how this is so important and why you should be paying attention to it as well in your business or your organization. There are millions, probably billions of dollars a year lost due to inefficiencies. And many times when you trace them back, it goes back to a lack of standards and systems and processes and procedures. That's why in my P4 Power Coaching, it's people, processes, performance, profitability. All of them interlink and they make it possible for businesses to sustain themselves over the long haul. In turn, what that means is there are many people who get to keep their jobs. There are new jobs that are created and communities are able to flourish as a result of that. So this kind of work is one of the ways that that myself and my team, we make a meaningful difference. So let's delve into the high cost of disorganization and micromanagement. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you three true real life scenarios that I have observed and somewhat experienced through my coaching practice where business leaders unwittingly, they were not aware of it. No one would ever do this intentionally or on purpose, but they were costing their companies thousands of dollars a year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down to three examples. One is going to be a very small business owner or solopreneur. Another is going to be what I would call a mid-level business owner. So their annual gross profits would be around the one to $3 million range. 
And then the last one is going to be what I call a high end small business. So yes, they're small business, but they, they have a corporate structure. Um, by many in small business, they would seem like they were big business, but their annual gross profits would probably be in the range of eight to $10 million a year. So I'm going to give you some examples and hard numbers of how disorganization and micromanagement have cost each of these entities. And again, this is real life. And as I'm sharing these, I want you to think about this too. Like the some of the details that I tell you, it may not match exactly your business, but I want you to understand the vision of what I'm doing because you can tweak what I'm sharing and you can do your own down and dirty math to figure out what disorganization and micromanagement may be costing you and your business on an annual basis. And when you do that, then I challenge you, take that math out further. Take it out to a three-year cost, a five-year expense, and see how you can almost instantly put that money back in your net profits and further blacken your bottom line. And isn't that the goal? And by doing so, you in turn can help save jobs, create jobs, and have a very positive impact on your community. So let's dig in. So this first business owner, again, solopreneur, and gross yeah, $100,000, $150,000 a year annually. But they had employees. And so they had about five employees. I always like to go conservative on my numbers. So for this one, I'm going to go with three employees. So they had some maintenance people, they had some telephone, uh, a telephone person or two. Uh, those people also doubled and did some marketing for them as well. Um, but by the time you put it all together, so there was, you know, maintenance, repairs, uh, again, phone calls, customer service type of a person and marketing and bookkeeping and all of that. But if I take the three employees and again, solopreneur, so, you know, fairly young business. So they were paying these three employees at a rate of $15 per hour. But I want you to remember this. When you think about an hourly rate of an employee, you can never go just on what we state that rate to be. Because you have to add in FICA taxes, those employer responsible taxes that we have to pay into the government. You have to pay in usually some kind of a work comp insurance. And then if there's any kind of benefits that you pay to or on the behalf of that employee, there's a small cost that's associated with that as well. But in this case, I can tell you that it's a pretty accurate number that on top of the 15 per hour, I could equate the others to about $3 per hour. So really the labor cost per employee was $18 an hour. And so what I would watch was this solopreneur feeling a little nervous and tense. Again, it was a younger, newer business. Um, they were trying to feel their way through, if you will. But day after day, I would watch them in their disorganized chaos, I'll call it. Their employees and or contractors, because they actually had a mix of both, were constantly waiting on the solopreneur. So they were waiting on direction, guidance, assignments, or approvals if they were working on some kind of a project. Now, I would just call these things organization and preparation. You know, these are the things that people need from us when we are in a leadership role before they feel confident and comfortable in proceeding. And this doesn't count all the fits and starts and interruptions and distractions that occur midstream in a job while someone is working in a disorganized or micromanaged task or project. So there was a scientific study that was done several years ago, and I use this a lot in my coaching practice. But what they determined in this study is that if we are concentrating on something, if our focus is disrupted, it takes an average of 20 minutes for us to get back to that same 
depth of focus. So that's additional lost time. And for just three people, and I'm going to be extremely conservative, I would say in this scenario for this solopreneur's business, that I would estimate that we're just going to do one unnecessary, and I focus on unnecessary. Sometimes we can't help, we, we have to interrupt someone. But I'm talking about those things that either if we were organized, maybe we would accumulate questions or conversations that we needed to have and do that in one fell swoop instead of constantly interrupting someone every time something hits our minds, right? Or creating an environment where people are afraid not to do that with you constantly. So not only is their focus disrupted, but then yours can be as well. So there's a double loss when that occurs. But we're not even going to consider that. So we're going to say that these three people had one unnecessary interruption or disruption of their concentrated focus a day. So if I were to look at a five day work week, that would be another five hours per week. And we've already said that their rate of pay including what you have to pay on their behalf as an employer, would be about $18 per hour. So that would equal $90 a week. So right now, what we're looking at for this particular solopreneur between the the time that they have to stand around and wait, and I figure that at about an hour and a half a day, which I again, I'm going to promise you that is very conservative for what I observed in this situation. But an hour and a half a day for three people, then plus the one unnecessary interruption per day for these three people, do you know that the math for this would equate in the hours lost, get this, $591 a week. It's reality. It happens all the time. Oh, I do have to say this. I'm sorry. I do have an additional figure put in here. In this case, they had to have these employees go to some different locations because of the type of business it was. It was actually a rental business. And so there were a lot of times because of disorganization and micromanagement where there were unnecessary or multiple trips that took place. Whereas if they would have had everything set up and organized and prepared in advance, they wouldn't have had to turn around and go back. Or if they didn't have to get approval for every tiny little detail from this solopreneur, then they could just focus on continuing the work and maintaining their momentum. But because of that, I will tell you that um, I just equated that at, at three of those a week, which is very conservative as well. But when you put all of that together, then that comes up to $591 a week. So that includes the vehicle expense, the one unnecessary interruption a day, plus the hour and a half times three employees that they have to stand around and wait for direction, guidance, assignments, or approval. $591 a week. But that also equals out to $2,561 a month or $30,732 a year. I don't know many small business owners who can sustain that level of loss, of profit loss. Again, remember, I said this is a company that only grosses between $100,000 and $150,000 per year. This doesn't include all the other expenses that are involved in keeping this business going. So you can see how being able to plug this invisible drain, and and if you listen to me very much, you've heard me talk about invisible drains. It's a, a phrase that I've coined, but it's those things that drain our money, time, and energy. But by plugging that, it's an instantaneous pretty much boost of net profit to the business. And it can be done really quickly if the person at that topmost leadership position will just take responsibility and put in, frankly, some very simple changes and practices on a regular basis. And I'm going to talk about those at the end of this. Okay, so that's our first business owner. Let's now talk about our second business owner. So this is a mid-level, I've already said, annual gross profits of a million to $3 million a year. 
And in this case, let's imagine that the employer has about 40 employees at an average $18 per hour. And in today's world and, and in this style of business that I have seen on multiple occasions, that's pretty healthy numbers. And then we'll add another $4 per hour for FICA, work comp, employee benefits paid. And so that's a total labor cost of $22 per hour per employee. Now, again, in this case, a little larger company, we're going to say only half of the 40 are impacted by disorganization and micromanagement, but they're going to lose an average of an hour and a half daily as they wait for direction, guidance, assignments, and approval. And let's say out of that, though, I mean, we have to be realistic. Let's say 10 of them are mid-level managers, so they're actually leading other people. And one thing we have to keep in mind, when there is a chronic disorganization and micromanagement issue that starts at the very top, there is certainly a trickle down effect. And what that means is when you have folks in mid-level management who are on the receiving end of disorganization and micromanagement from executive levels, that gets passed on down to their people because as they're waiting, their people are waiting on them. So you have to consider it all. Well, when I think about that, I think, well, then we're going to bump up two hours a day in daily lost time at $22 per hour. Because again, I'm just factoring in those folks who are waiting more at a front level. And I am convinced this is a very conservative number based on this exact type of scenario that I've observed. And I want to kind of plant this seed in your mind as well. I'm not even including the unethical employees who lack integrity and will take advantage of the micromanaging or disorganized leader. They'll milk the clock working to get out of work or pretending to work. And they'll even sometimes encourage or enhance distractions. I've seen many a person who will like stroke the ego and, and get the leader involved in some kind of, you know, superfluous kind of conversation that doesn't have anything to do with productivity just to keep them talking and keep them from being focused on the job. Okay, so I've laid that groundwork. We are at the $22 an hour mark. We've got our 40 employees, half of which are impacted by disorganization or micromanagement. But again, 10 are mid-level, so they have people that are spilling down and being impacted as well. So we're losing an average of those two hours a day. But that then we have to add our 20-minute rule for those mid-task unnecessary interruptions. So again, let's go uber conservative and only figure one interruption per person per day. That comes to 200 breaks in concentration per week for these, these folks. And that equals about 66 and a half hours lost a week due to preventable distractions. So at $22 an hour, we're at $1,463 in weekly expense. Now, we're going to say for this type of business, just for argument's sake, that they don't go out on locations. So there's no vehicle expenses to include. Now, if you fit this size of business and you have vehicular expenses, you can simply do your own math and estimate what those costs would be for inefficiencies due to disorganization or micromanagement. And so if you have fuel costs, if you have wear and tear on the vehicle, if you have additional labor time loss from round trip, I just had one client a few weeks ago where I was going through uh, uh, just like a coaching practice, like four hour uh, training with them and their entire team. And I have these very specific exercises that I have developed through the years that really help draw out and draw up invisible drains that we don't necessarily see on our own. And so in that process, one of the things that we identified was they were having multiple employees many times a week, making unnecessary 
round trips back to their shop because of a disorganization that was starting at the beginning of the day. So there was one employee who actually had tried to set the tone to organize these things, but sadly, the rest of the team was just kind of blowing him off and not really paying that much of attention to him. He was an introvert, so he was a soft-spoken gentleman, and, and they just weren't taking him seriously. But as I took them through this exercise, and I started picking up on some things, so I started digging deeper and asking more questions, and before you know it, or before you knew it, this bubbled up and out. And I, on the spot, said, okay, hold on, we're going to do some down and dirty math. We're going to say that this happens six times a week with their crew and with their rate of pay, wear and tear on their vehicles, um, fuel, all of this. We put all of those factors in and took less than five minutes. I was able to visually show them how they were losing $96,800 a year, every year, just from that inefficiency alone. The owner of the company got a little teary-eyed, not going to lie. I think it was a big eye-opener for him. But what was even more exciting was the engagement and the interest from everyone on the team. You heard the energy and the passion in their voices raise as everyone got excited about, oh my gosh, I didn't realize. Wow, man, I'm sorry I wasn't listening to you. Yeah, okay, what are we going to do? Let's change this. We can fix this. And in a matter of minutes, was able to guide them to a solution that started immediacy in plugging that invisible drain. What can this small business owner do with $100,000 a year? Because what I showed them was measurable. And as the owner said to me, he goes, I promise you it's more than that. So I guarantee it was over $100,000 a year that we saved through that one exercise. Do you think that it was a good investment for them to go through that? I certainly think it was. And I can tell you that it was very exciting and satisfying for me to watch everyone light up. And since then, to get some of the uh, communications that I've gotten from them. But this is the kind of difference it can make when you first recognize, identify, acknowledge that the issue exists, and then do something to plug that drain. So anyway, sorry, I kind of got derailed and went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but let's get back to our our mid-level business. So we're talking about this business that uh, we've decided we're going to say for for this case that they don't go out on locations, but they do have these employees and they have the 40 employees and 20 of them are directly impacted by disorganization or micromanagement. We are saying that they have a $1,463 weekly preventable expense. When you multiply out that cost to a month, we're looking at $6,339.67 or $76,076 in net income lost annually, year after year. Again, do the math, three years, five years, 10 years. At 10 years, if they were to continue and not plug this drain, they are looking at almost a million dollar loss over a 10 year span. Now, I don't know too many business owners who would hold a lighter to $76,000 and burn it up, but that's essentially what's happening with labor waste from disorganization or micromanagement. So think about the people you're leading. Think about the organization you're responsible for or the department or the agency that you're running. I think it makes a lot of sense to do a good, hard inspection and ask yourself, are there areas where disorganization and micromanagement are costing us money unnecessarily? And once you identify it, like it's not something to beat yourself or other people up over because frankly, you can't go back in time and change it. But what you can do 
is you can just grab hold of this thing and say, you know what, I'm going to go into solution mode. And I'm going to start making changes today that are going to start saving us money instantly by being more equipped, by being more prepared, by getting more organized. Let's look at our final small business owner. Now, this one ranges in the high end of gross revenues. Again, we're going to say they're a larger corporation by small business standards with multiple work sites or locations. And we're going to also say they gross eight to $10 million annually. And we're also going to imagine that we have a leader who's frankly spread too thin. And I see this happen a lot. Uh, many times people don't realize that businesses are as much or maybe even more in jeopardy from growth than they are when they're starting out. And so this is one of those cases where growth can be a uh, jeopardizing factor if you have someone in leadership and they're trying to chase their own tails, running all over the place, trying to lead and manage too many people or too many locations at one time. And I can tell you that there's one particular business that is uh, coming to mind when I think about this. Okay, so we're going to say with this business, and again, there is one that's that's on my mind that I've observed and experienced. And let's say they have four locations where disorganization or micromanagement is an issue. Employees are paid at an average rate of $20 per hour, which again, in this day and time for qualified people is is probably pretty reasonable. And let's say we have 12 people per location that are standing around waiting for direction, guidance, assignments, or approval. And of course, we must also add the expenses such as the FICA payroll taxes that the, the employer is responsible for, work comp insurance, plus any benefits that are paid to or on behalf of the employee. So we're going to conservatively, conservatively give all of this $5 per hour. And we're going to say that the labor cost is $25 per employee per hour. And then we're going to take it by the four locations. So we have the 12 employees that we're saying are impacted. And we're going to say there's four locations. So that's 48 people at $25 per hour or $1,200 a day that's lost. It's just lost. That's $6,000 eating into their weekly net profits. It's crazy. But again, it happens time and time and time again. And then we throw in the 20 minute rule. And so it's that average length of time that it takes people to reach a sharply focused mental state. And again, I'm going to be super conservative and I'm going to say only one interruption per day. So that's 240 mental breaches in focus, but that equates to 80 hours a week lost. Again, unnecessarily. That's another $2,000 a week wasted. Isn't that insane? So the total loss multiplied by 48 employees standing around waiting for direction, guidance, assignments, or approval, or they're trying to look busy and maybe trying to work to get out of work, or maybe some of them are schmoozing and trying to milk the clock, whatever that is. But then you add in the one unnecessary break in concentration a day, and you are looking at $8,000 a week lost, $34,666.67 per month, or $416,000 a year wasted. Yeah, you heard that right. Isn't that insane? It's crazy. Now, multiply that math out. Take that by 10 years. Uh, 4.1 mil. I don't care how successful you are or how much money you bring in. I don't see anyone who would throw almost half a million dollars a year away. Yet, most of us throw money away day after day through disorganization and micromanagement. Now look, everything I've shared is measurable, at least in estimable or an abstract way. But there's yet another intangible expense to loss 
or productive work time due to disorganization or mismanagement, or I'm sorry, micromanagement. But to me, micromanagement is mismanagement. But while people are standing around or trying to look busy, while they're waiting for that direction, guidance, assignment, or approval, this is time that could be spent on other income generating projects or tasks. So let's say that the average $20 per hour employee's work stimulates $100 per hour in earned income. And frankly, at the level of business I'm talking about right now, those employees better be generating that kind of income. Otherwise, the business is probably not sustainable. So it's safe to equate lost productive time at $100 per hour per employee times 48 people That's another $4,800 that's lost just for an hour a day. Again, crazy money because that's $4,800 in income that wasn't generated that could have been generated if we weren't distracted by disorganization and micromanagement. And there's another immeasurable cost to disorganization and micromanagement. And this is the frustration, disillusion, and stress that it causes your best employees. Many a great employee who actually could have saved and made an organization money has quit due to chronic bouts of waiting around and just, you know, wanting that direction, guidance, assignment, or approval, or just tell me what to do. Let me get to work. They're great workers, but they feel stifled. They feel stunted. And so ultimately, they will move on, especially if they don't see accountability for those folks who are maybe milking the clock. That's a whole other level. So taking the time to create clear systems, standards, procedures, and processes is something you cannot afford to put off. Investing in training and resources that lead to better processes is an income generator, not an expense. I promise you. You got to plug those drains. And sometimes you do need an outside perspective. If you do, that's great. If you don't, that's great too. However you get it done, plug the drains. But there's even yet another immeasurable cost to disorganization and micromanagement. When we add in customer or client dings for lack of perceived value due to our unprofessionalism or missed or late deadlines, or just the simple emotional stress we cause people who are paying to do business with us because we project chaos and confusion in our work habits, we're going to lose those customers and clients ultimately. They're not going to stick around for long. People aren't going to continue paying for that level of, of distrust and when they don't feel like they're getting the value or the bang for their buck. So as we get ready to move into some of the solution mode, I just want to say, I hope I've shown you the high cost measurably and immeasurably for disorganization and micromanagement. I promise you cannot afford the waste. So let's talk about what we can do differently. So I'm going to give you, even though we just have a few more minutes here, um, just a couple of the types of exercises that I take some of my clients through. Now, if, if I were working with you and doing a customized coaching scope, there's a plethora of uh, very specific things that we might do depending on what your needs are. But these general exercises are things that work for just about anyone. And, you know, as I'm recording this right now, we are closing in on the end of another year. It's a great time to think about the coming year and what you want to do differently, how you're going to prioritize differently so that you can improve your net profits and again, black them your bottom line. So think about that. And if you're listening to this and it's not the end of the year, so what? It's never too late for a fresh start with fresh faith. So here's one of the exercises, the less and more exercise. And it's so simple. It is not rocket science, but get something, a whiteboard or a flip chart or something that gives you a visual 
and do a brainstorm and do this with some of your people. You'll get greater engagement, more buy-in, and they'll be more involved in helping you solve the problems. But go through the exercise and ask yourself, what should we do less of that will lead to greater success? And I mean exhausted. And anything anybody thinks of, it goes up on that visual. And then when you've exhausted that, then ask yourself, what should we do more of that will lead to greater success? I promise you there will be things that show up that may even surprise you or maybe you just kind of do it mindlessly so you don't pay attention to it and you're not thinking about the cost to the company. But now that you have this level of awareness and understanding how you can do some of this down and dirty math for your business and figure out what some of that cost might be. You know, these estimates, they'll be close. They don't have to be down to the penny. All you're trying to do is give yourself and others a wake up call, but it works. Our brain sticks to numbers. And so when you do that and you have those numbers in mind, when you go through something like a less and more exercise, what that does for you is it makes that stick more and it it gives you a greater commitment at a subconscious level, which means you are going to be much more prone to execute and follow through. So you're going to cut some things that are not productive and profitable, and you're going to add some things that are going to be more productive and profitable. And again, if you do it with your team, you've got everybody on board. So that's one thing. Another, this is, a, a again, something very simple. And it's so crazy to me how many times I hear people say, oh, I know that, Anita. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And my challenge to that is always the same. Don't tell me what you know. Show me what you're doing with what you know. Because most people who say I know are not acting on it. And if you don't act on it, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but it's a waste. When you act on knowledge, that's wisdom. And if you're going to succeed and thrive as an exceptional leader, you need to exercise wisdom. So this is one of those things that I challenge you. If you're not already doing it, don't think to yourself, I know, and start to blow it off. You need to challenge yourself to take action and do this thing. And it's simply this, create some checklists for the end of shift or the previous day, but there's different types of checklists you can do. You can have a start of the day checklist. When your crew or your team comes into work, they should know immediately what they need to start working on that's going to be productive and profitable. And you need to keep those two words in mind, productive and profitable. What's going to be productive and profitable for them to start the day? Have that checklist ready in front of them so they can go straight to work. Or maybe you need to do a by project checklist. Maybe there are some things that people feel uncomfortable or they lack confidence in. But if they had a checklist that gave them guidelines instead of them interrupting you all the time or themselves, frankly, they could just simply reference the checklist. Another one is end of shift checklist. And especially if you hear yourself crabbing and complaining about why my people don't clean up or or any thing else, you know, why they think leave things half done or something, then create a checklist because that also provides you with a level of accountability. It's much more difficult to hold people accountable if you don't have some kind of formal accountability measure in place. And checklists are a great measurement tool. But remember, as you create these checklists, make sure that you are focused on what is productive and profitable. This isn't just busy work. These are tasks that are geared to generating net profitability for your company or your organization. And then the last one that I want to share with you, because if you're listening to this, I believe wholeheartedly that you are committed, you have a desire to be an exceptional leader. And If that is true of you, as I believe it is, then 
you will do this thing for yourself. Commit that you are not going to be a micromanager, that you are not going to be a source of disorganization and disruption. And so create a micromanaging or micromanagement busting mantra for yourself. So for every minute wasted, remind yourself, I'm losing money or we're losing money. You know, what seems like only a few bucks is equating to thousands of dollars every year and possibly each month. And you say those type of things to yourself. Again, for every minute wasted, we're losing money. What seems like only a few bucks is equating to thousands of dollars every year and possibly each month. Say that to yourself often, write it down, have it in front of you, but remind yourself not to blow off or justify or push the easy button for you maybe in the moment that's going to frankly cause you to sacrifice what you really want on the altar of immediate gratification. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to your people. Don't do that to your organization. Commit to saying, I will not be a micromanager or a disorganizer. And then start making the changes you need in your life as an exceptional leader to take responsibility at the top and champion changes that are going to start fixing the inefficiencies that are going to hold people accountable. So there's much less of the milking of the clock. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that everything's going to suddenly come up rosy and be perfect all the time, but I'm going to tell you, you can vastly improve your bottom line by making these kinds of changes. So as I close out today, I just have a question. Are you going to be an exceptional leader? Are you going to be the champion of change that makes a difference? Are you going to be the catalyst for a blacker bottom line in your company? Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Exceptional Leadership Podcast. There's magic in meeting with an objective, and I always have an objective for you, not only in these episodes, but also from the other resources I offer on my website, anitabrooks.com. That's A-N-I-T-A-B-R-O-O-K-S dot com. There you'll find information on digital courses, webinars, books, workbooks, of course, my in-person P4 Power Coaching for businesses and organizations. And if you need a speaker for your conference or your strategic retreat, I'm your gal. But I'm also excited to let you know about a new service that we're offering. For less than half the price of a daily Starbucks latte for a month, you can join our P4 Power Coaching community. This is a monthly membership where you'll get insider tips. And you'll also be able to join our monthly Zoom meetings that are one part strategy sessions, one part mastermind, one part networking, one part coaching. I can promise you, you'll not only learn from me, but you'll learn from others in the group. We'll also have monthly webinars as part of the P4 Power Coaching community, and we'll have coaching resources and exercises. And you'll get first opportunities and special offers for many of the other things that we have to offer. And of course, you will get leadership encouragements. The P4 Power Coaching community is all about growth, success, and celebrating our wins. And remember, it's never too late for a fresh start with fresh faith. So embrace your exceptional leadership impact with fresh resolve to make the difference you were made for.